Mm, breakfast, because there's never a bad time for breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but it's also a meal that I could eat at every meal every day for the rest of my life. Give me a predict and it's a good day. Yeah. Now, like I said, there's never a bad time for it because to me, breakfast is comfort. It, it all is comfort. It's like a warm good. hug. And, and so comfort and also good memories, whether it was those Saturday mornings watching cartoons or eating breakfast around the table with the family, it takes you back to a time which, man, is so important right now, a time of comfort and, and that comfort zone when all of us are so far out of our normal comfort zone right now. Absolutely. So Robert, or not Robert, Roderick, uh, we've had the, the benefit of getting to know each other over the past couple months. Um, obviously you're a huge hockey fan. I can tell by all of those pucks in cases just to your right shoulder that you're a, you're a- Oh wait, I'm gonna step off for a second. Oh, do you actually have hockey stuff? When I was at Siebel Systems, we acquired a little Canadian company. Oh, no, no, I'm kidding. Well, Jana Systems, and I actually have a hockey puck. There you go. Can you skate? Um, not to save my life. I can't <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a six foot seven, 240 pound Canadian, and I have no clue how to skate. So we're on the same page there. Roderick, um, I got I to gotta, I gotta poke and pry and question a couple different things. Um, you are a sales enablement leader. Um, you help organizations generate business, basically. Mm -hmm. We're now living in a world where not only is it not responsible uh, to, but no one wants to be sold right now. You can't sell. You just can't. So what, what advice do you have for, for organizations right now? Because every day I open up my email, I open up my LinkedIn, I open up Twitter. I, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Twitter. Yeah, I'm, seeing, I'm with you. I'm seeing so many aggressive sales pitches and so many tone-deaf marketing automation pieces like, what is it like being in the sales enablement game when the world doesn't want to be sold? Uh, it's, it's interesting. Finger quote, interesting. And I'd love to start with, for those that are in that state of desperation and feel like they have to hard sell, stop it. Now is not the time to be selling. Now, more than ever, is the time to be leading with compassion, humanity, and EQ. And I know those all sound like cool marketing buzzwords. So let me unpeel that, that onion for you. What I mean is, think about this. How can you prospect to companies that don't have any prospects? It's tough. And all of us have to generate revenue. So right now, what we're doing from a sales enablement perspective in my company is, we're putting together these, what we're calling human videos. And it's really, you know, things like we're all in this together and not from, again, the buzzword, but what does that really mean as partners in this business or as even potential prospects, right? We, and we've got to get away from those labels of partner and customer and client and prospect and go back to the biggest P of all, people. So we're trying to show a human side and we're not selling. We're, we're literally reaching out with a personalized note. Another thing is stop with the cadences right now. They, they are too blatantly and transparently obvious. Go back to writing individualized emails. And I'm not saying you can't create some form of template, but it has to be customized to the individual you're talking to, not just the company that you're sending it to. Yeah. You said the biggest P. Now, I know you have a philosophy of five Ps. Um, walk me through that. I do, and, and it's what we call crafting the blueprint to success. And those five Ps are purpose, people, programs, performance, and platforms. Can you say that really fast five times? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me break that down for you a, a little bit. On purpose, think about this from what is your, cu your culture? What's your charter for your company? And what does success look like? And then driving that into people. We all talk about the ICP of ideal customer or client profile because we don't have enough acronyms in the world. Let me add another one. IEP. What's your ideal employee profile? Not for what you look like pre COVID, but for what you're moving towards when you come out of this. And that's what's the right structure. What talent will you need to be successful? What compensation will drive the right behavior 
And how are you going to craft more leaders and not just followers? Then there's the programs you've got to look at. You know, the onboarding programs for, because we're going to grow again at some point. What are the global initiatives and how does your company fit in? What's your competition doing right now? Are they also locking and battening down the hatches? Are they moving slowly? Or are they accelerating while you're sitting still? And finally, how will you, from a human perspective, be able to articulate domain expertise in the new normal that we're going into? The next P is performance. And that's around things like, how are you communicating? What are you sending out? What tone are you setting for your company? Are you focused on coaching for your first and second line managers? Have you gone beyond just training and starting to think about continuous learning for your legacy folks that you have now, especially if you're not going to be hiring? What are you going to be doing for those legacy sellers that have been there that may be a little behind the eight ball or a little stale? What new tools can you now look at that can scale and automate in a different way in the new normal than what it was pre-COVID? And then also, what metrics are you going to be able to tie to show that you're either decreasing the, the time to revenue or increasing productivity. And the final P is platforms. How do you scale? How are you gonna automate? Again, how are you gonna communicate both internally and externally? What are you doing from an EQ perspective to give some comfort to the people that you have inside of your companies that are working for you that are terrified and unsure of if they're gonna be here tomorrow, if the company's gonna continue, and how do you do this with honesty, humanity, compassion, and EQ? And that's why I say of all those Ps, purpose, people, platform, performance, the biggest P above all of those is people. How, um, how are you holding up? Like you, you already work from home. Uh, I've, yeah. I've gotten familiar with your, your, your Longhorns football many a time. Welcome. Have you, so you, you must be following Matthew McConaughey on, uh, on Twitter. Why not? <laughs> oh, he's, he's hilarious. But he is he, hilarious. Uh, he, he keeps things light, but also he's brilliant at being able to say things in a non-threatening way that we're all thinking. Yep. And because it's Matthew McConaughey, he can get away with it. So can you, can you do your best Matthew McConaughey impression for us? That was it. Did you miss it? <laughs> 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 I do, I do, I do like this all-in challenge that uh, those that have, have the means uh, are, are, are really donating and participating in that kind of stuff. It's amazing to see how much money they've raised in such a short period of time. Um, I'd be curious to see, you know, when you look at, at what your area of expertise is and, and, and the companies that you're helping and the people that you're helping, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we bring it back to emotional intelligence and EQ and all that kind of stuff. What, what advice would you give to organizations that haven't necessarily invested in that more uh, human side of things within their employee base and was more focused on, say, sales tactics or, you know, different sort of automated tools that allow you to do the same thing faster? For these organizations that haven't really had that human approach previously, how, how are they going to make that transition now under pressure? Because you, you, you nailed it before. How do you sell to someone or how do you prospect someone who has no prospects? How do you teach someone who's under a ton of pressure, both emotionally and mentally and, and family and revenue and all that kind of stuff? How, how do we teach these people in a very short order how to be human? Well, I, I think there are two points to be made here. The first is, Remember that you're not selling to a logo, that you're not selling to a company. Ultimately, you're selling to someone that right now, the decision to buy from you could make or break their career and their family life. Mm -hmm. So going back to the, the first P again of people. The second is, remember that it all starts with the buyer's journey. And I'm amazed at how many companies don't have their buyer's journey mapped out. And I'm not talking about your selling process. I'm not talking about your selling methodology, your Optio review plans. I'm not talking about forecasting and deal desk. But what are the decisions criteria and what are the gates and measures for when your prospects are buying? And then how do you tie that into your sales cycle, your sales processes? Because quite frankly, if you don't focus on the buyer's journey, you're not gonna get new buyers. And we all know that there is not a company out there that can exist only on existing business. So take it back to the basics right now. 
look at your buyer's journey, map that out, put that on a whiteboard or wherever it may be digitally on top of your sales process and your sales stages and, and sales cycle. And then figure out right now, where are your people having the most difficult time in those stages and focus on that specifically? Mm -hmm. We've been fortunate as buyers and as sellers to be able to broad, broadly paint where we're going and what does the journey look like and what's the strategy, the architecture, the execution? Not right now. Now, if you're not focused on two things and two things only, how do you decrease time to revenue? How do you increase productivity? You're not going to be having a whole lot of conversations. So you're, you're in the Bay Area, you're in California. Um, right. We are in Ottawa. I was saying uh, to you this morning, guess what happened uh, this morning? And uh, you seem to be- guess. It snowed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Second half of April and it snowed. So when I look out my window uh, today, I see snow and I'm miserable and come on. Mm -hmm. When you look at your window in the Bay Area now, is it a ghost town? Like what, uh, what are you seeing? First and foremost, it's beautiful outside right now. You are such a jerk. It is, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's why I live here instead of Ottawa. And that's no disrespect to Canadians. I love it up there. But I'm a guy from Texas that moved to, to California. I know and I love heat. But to your question, it's absolutely gorgeous outside. It's probably 78, 80 degrees today. And the skies are blue. We don't have the thickness of the smoke from all the fires that we had recently floating around out there. Now, that's above our head. Let's bring it back closer to the ground. It is an absolute ghost town because in the Bay Area, we have a shelter in place right now, which means we're not in lockdown. You can go outside for essentials. You can go get food. You can go on a Where's Waldo hunt for paper goods. Good luck on that one. <laughs> but you can go out and you can go do things that are essential. But effective today, legally, you must wear a mask anytime you are out in public. Wow. So the world has changed. Now, from a couple of ways. One, standing in line six feet apart from someone to get into a store that you normally just walked in puts a different level of stress on you. Walking outside and thinking, I need to go get food, by, by, but by go getting this food, I could be endangering myself, I could be endangering people out there or in my household. Because the statistic that I saw is 50% of people right now with COVID-19 are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. So you don't know if you're a walking time, ticking time bomb. The other is, I went to the bank the other day. Now, in context, go to the ATM, I look in the bank, and I see, because it's open, it's essential. Imagine walking into a bank with a mask on and no one wondering what's wrong. Oh. That's what's happening right now. Wow. And did you, uh, did you make your own? Like, did you do the, 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 the I forget Matthew McConaughey's character, the, uh, the bandito? The bandito. <laughs> Actually, I have two. I have the, the standard, you know, that goes over, but I do have a bandito that I also put over that as a second layer. And just did you have some sort of inspirational messaging written across it? The, what would be the only thing that a true UT Texan would put? Hook them horns. Hook em. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm, what I'm hearing is you're walking into a bank with a mask that reads hook em. <laughs> uh, um, I'm assuming the Longhorns logo is there and it's not like, you know, Captain Hook'em. Yeah, no, uh, not Captain Hook'em. <laughs> so maybe, maybe you could settle a debate for me and I'll give you some context. Um, when I was in university, this was a 15, 20 years, I graduated in 2004, so many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, my father is, uh, is a retired high school math teacher. And when I came home from university, uh, I came to the realization that he had a guilty pleasure. And that guilty pleasure was watching the TV show, The O.C. Mm. Not sure if you've ever watched the show, but I'm sure you're familiar with the, the theme song. I'm familiar with California. it. California. Yes. So I'm curious, as a Californian, what is the best song with California in the title? Is it The O.C. theme song? Is it California Dreamin'? Or is it California Love? It's Tupac. I'm not familiar with how it goes. Can you hum it for me or at least get into the first couple verses? California knows how to party. <laughs> You're doing a spoken word. <laughs> right. Knows how to party. That's right. From LA to the Bay. 
California knows how to party. <laughs> <laughs> so the parties at your house, I'm assuming, don't have, uh, you know, obnoxious bass. It's, like, it's a spoken word party with a glass of, I don't know, some sort of snooty bourbon or... You couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> okay. We, we are a base trap in this house. <laughs> that, see, that's that secret other side of me. I'm not bringing him out. Nice try, though. Uh, but, well, I, I it's all about try. base, and there are no glasses of Chardonnay floating around and things of that sort. Not around here. It's more like a gray goose and pineapple. Not a gin and juice, or is that the wrong artist? No, I actually love gin and juice and grew up on it, literally. And now it hates me. Oh, uh, box man. <laughs> it's one of these things where you, you think that you're <clears throat> allergic to gin, but it only kicks in when you have too much of it. Yes. I don't think that's an allergy. I think that's because it was always my drink of choice. And now, no mas. No mas. What, um, what are you looking forward to the most uh, when it's safe to go outside without a mask on? I'm a super extrovert. To me, the biggest thing I look forward to is face-to-face -face conversations and hugs again. Yeah. And it's because, you know, being the extrovert, we, our love language is a hug. And a hug tells you a lot, right? If it's a, a tight, I'm in distress, I'm having difficulties, uh, I'm struggling right now. If it's a, oh, I'm so happy to see you, if it's a, it's been forever since we've seen each other, or if it's a, yeah, let me just, yeah. we, we don't really do that. Yeah, exactly. How, how tall are you? Um, six, four. Six, four. Okay. So you and I likely have struggles with the hug scenario. When yeah. hugging someone sub five, six. Yeah. Uh, you you get a lot around the midsection. You get a lot around <laughs> the midsection and then you have to go down. It's like, and you got, yeah, you, you, know, you got to do the hunch. You know what I'm a big fan of? Uh, and this is not something I recommend uh, to do to a stranger. Uh, this is someone that you have, you know, uh, some familiarity with. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of the underhook and then the lift up. So it's like, it's like a lift mm -hmm. up sort of thing. Now, bear in mind, if, if they don't know you're about to pick them up, you can get kicked in the shins. That, that uh, you can. So yeah. you, don't, you don't want to do that without, without knowledge. But I do find these hugs are the <laughs> least satisfying. They are. Absolutely. I know with friends of mine that I'm close friends with, they know if you hug me, you're going to be lifted off the ground. <laughs> you know, it comes with the territory. When you lift them up, you go, wee! Why would you not kill the whole process if you don't? <laughs> it's their roller coaster ride. You've got to say wee. I, I would love one day uh, to meet like a six foot, sorry, a seven foot six giant. Seven foot six, 400 pound giant. Mm -hmm. who can then make me the little spoon of a hug. You know, I've never been picked up. I want to know I've what been thing. picked up. <laughs> I've been picked up, and, and it's an odd thing. It really is, because you're so used to being on that other side, and now you yeah. get a chance to see what it's like, because neither of us are used to feeling small. I'm 6'4", 240, 245, right? Small generally is not in our, our vocabulary. That's but to right. have someone that envelops you and then lifts you off the ground, it's an odd feeling. So Roderick, um, what has surprised you the most about what you've learned about yourself over the past couple of months? Resilience and, and the ability to adapt to what's going on in the world and how important humanity really is to me personally. And, and to expound on that just a little bit. Um, as I said, I'm the super extrovert. And when I meet my clients, we shake hands and then eventually we get to a hug phase. And it's about flexibility right now. It's about um, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable because this didn't trickle in. Um, this happened overnight to all of us, just snap, it was gone. So the ability to not just, and no pun intended, pivot, uh -huh. step like that one, right? <laughs> and step into a new direction now. And with enablement, frankly, we, we've innovated in tools for scalability and automation purposes. But I realized personally and enablement together, we haven't really innovated in 20 years. We're still using the same process, the same tools. This has forced me to get uncomfortable with everything I've been comfortable with for the last 25 years in this space and think about 
the new normal and how this can impact people, not just processes and programs and platforms. Roderick, would you be uncomfortable if I posted your personal cell phone number when we post this video? I, I wouldn't be uncomfortable, but I'd be calling Sprint. <laughs> <laughs> How, uh, how can people learn more about you? What's, what's the website? Uh, yeah, so we're, the website is you know, rodericjefferson.com and we are all over uh, social media right now. It's, it's an interesting thing that is, a, a, to your point, a love-hate sometimes because of the things that it's supposed to do. Most of the time it does, other times it's kind of crazy. But if you want to find us, we're on uh, LinkedIn at Roderick Jefferson and Associates. We're on Twitter at The Voice of Rod, on Facebook at The Voice of Rod. You can hit us on email at info at roderickjefferson.com, or you can find us on uh, our website at roderickjefferson.com. Also, roderick underscore j underscore associates on Instagram. If you can't find us, you're not really trying. What, um, what's your TikTok handle? I don't TikTok. I find that to be ridiculous. Yeah, and, and that's the next platform that we're stepping towards. I think, I think you should enable yourself to become a TikToker, I believe they're called. Why is that? What is it about TikTok that I need to be on it right now? Well, I, I tell the others that aren't there. I, I just, I'm a peer pressure type. I, I dance like a wounded gazelle. So I have no business being on TikTok, but I will do my best to get others on TikTok because I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great about TikTok right now is just the per video number of laughs that it's creating. Yeah, 100%. It's so needed right now. It really is. Well, I think, I think we're all doing what we can to um, push more positivity into our lives. I think that's wildly important, not just for our own mental health and our own well-being, but for those that we care about and those around us and even strangers. Yeah. Um, I have no idea who's going to watch this and if they're going to get any value, but at the very least, I hope, I hope they can take some positivity out of this. So. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, we have the same population in Canada as you have in your state. Wow. Um, so I, I wish you and your family continued uh, health and, and, and safety and success, all that kind of stuff. I would, I would like to see your mask at some point. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, hope, I hope you stay well. Thanks, man. And same to you and, and yours and to those that are listening. I wish all of you health and safety. And please be careful out there right now. It's crazy. Hashtag we're all in this together. All in this together. You be good. Thanks. Take care. Have a good one.